this is a this is a jolly difficult case that Anthony de Kalmakova shared with me, and um, it exemplifies why one really needs to look very carefully at, at, at images and not not always make a diagnosis at, at uh, first glance or on at times too objective. Um, we can tell that this is almost certainly facial skin with the with uh, um, the follicular sebaceous glands uh, as we see here, and there's also quite uh, marked soroelastosis, and so I think this is probably a tumor that's arisen on the face of an elderly patient. Now, at low power magnification, the thing you can make out so pretty obviously is that this is a huge tumor, and it's in this cut, it's just coming down into subcutaneous fat, and we'll look at other pieces later on. There's a little bit of, of, of bone that's sitting there, uh, just as an interesting but unimportant um, or irrelevant uh, finding. Um, so I'm going to magnify this up a bit. So we'll look at, um, there. there's the edge of the tumor there. Unfortunately, we don't have an origin, and I, I don't see that in any of the cuts, which makes life a bit difficult. But here is part of the tumor here that we might want to look at a bit more closely. And I think, uh, I think we can be pretty sure that in this field at least it's showing uh, squamous differentiation, but it's not, it, it's, not, it, it's not keratinizing, which is why it's quite difficult. But I think what, one would be fairly confident that in this field at least that we've got, um, I suppose you'd call it polar differentiated squamous carcinoma. And I just that that there's another field there where we've got a bit more. Just look at that and again. I think that's squamous carcinoma there, but uh, it's jolly difficult. Most of the tumor is not really doing anything. It's undifferentiated, and then there's a very heavy uh, inflammatory cell reaction with lots of lymphocytes, and plasma cells are very abundant just to um, to confuse the issue. But I think uh, looking at a field like this, you see there's plenty of nuclear pleomorphism and very prominent nu nuclei. So I don't think anybody, at least I hope nobody would be in any doubt that this is a, a malignant tumor uh, from the cytology in addition to the, uh, the extensive spread of the tumor and, and its involvement. You see, there is there it is in the deep particular dermis, and um, it's actually going into subcutaneous fat. Now, this field caught my eye here. I just wasn't, it, this looks, look, looks like a blood vessel. Um, and I'd be worried, it's hard to be certain, but I'd be worried that there might well be tumor in there. It's, this is something where immunohistochemistry would be awfully useful if one had it, just to check that out. But unfortunately, I, I can't do that. And uh, now there's another, another field that I, I, I noted on the low power that I want to find. Ah, uh, here we are. This is very nice. You see, in this part of the tumor, the differentiation is quite different. It's showing glandular differentiation uh, with nice uh, eosinophilic luminal secretions. We'll look at that at higher magnification, and we'll go all the way to the... Uh, and there you can see that there's a nice cuticle lining the uh, lining these glandular structures so that they're not developing as a consequence of acanthalysis, I don't think. I think these are genuine 
genuine lumina. So that would mean we have a, an adenocarcinomatous component. And just while we're passing, I mean, there's a mitosis there. I wasn't really looking for them because I don't think that's going to really matter very much either way. But in this part of the tumour, there's very obvious um, glandular differentiation. So we've got a mixture. We've got a mixture of uh, poorly differentiated, non carotinizing squamous carcinoma and uh, adenocarcinoma. In fact, if I go down a magnificent, down to times 10 even, you can see that the adenocarcinoma bit is quite conspicuous. And the other interesting thing is it tends to be, it's more down in the deep aspect rather than super, superficially in which the tumour is mostly undifferentiated or, or showing squamous differentiation. Now, I, I wanted to see... Um, if I could pick up any nerves, it's it's quite difficult. Um, I think largely because the section is a bit pale on this side, and I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. Is that a nerve there? Maybe if we look at that at higher magnification. Gosh, it, it might be, but I, I, I'm not absolutely sure. So let's go back to a, a lower power and... Um, We'll have a look at a different piece uh, of tissue. Let's let's look at that one there and see if we can find anything more out of it. Always look at at, at multiple pieces of tissue. Ah, oh, great! You see, here here we've got a we've got a nice cut through through the surface, and so there's there's one edge and there's the other. I, I suspect this was ulcerated, probably, but we've got this cup-shaped um, edge to the tumour. That's a lovely, a lovely um, uh, section to to come across. And here, here we can see. Well, it's it's. Um, it's pretty close to the origin, I, I, you know, it's it's a bit iffy, but there's definite squamous epithelium there, right at the surface. So let's, let's go back down again and see if we, what I'm looking for really in this, at the moment, is to see if I can pick up any, any nerves. And also if we can see that blood vessel any any better there's there's the blood vessel there oh it's not going to it's not going to uh, it's not going to let me look at it any closer unfortunately okay well I think that's about all I can do with this case so the final diagnosis isn't that pretty that the final diagnosis is an adenosquamous carcinoma? And this is of importance because it has a, a pretty high recurrence rate and it may, it may spread to um, the local lymph nodes and it's the very devil of a tumour to treat. They typically are very thick at presentation, as this one is, and they often show perineural infiltration. Now, I think the dermatology world like to treat this with Mohs surgery, and that's probably a jolly good idea. They, they tend to occur in the elderly. They're um, predominantly seen in males, and typically affect the face and the scalp. And I think they may also affect the upper limbs sometimes. And there's an interesting correlation with immunosuppressed patients. Uh, I think these uh, these tumors are, are pretty rare. 
Uh, one, the differential diagnosis, of course, is, is an acantholytic squamous cell carcinoma, but I think we were fairly happy that this is true glandular differentiation, and so that doesn't come into the differential diagnosis. Um, and that's about all I have to say about this case. So I hope that's of interest to you, and uh, thank you very much, as always, for spending the time to listen to it. Thank you very much.